episode 14 is in the books. Cool. We hit it off. Uh, we hit it off strong with this one. Well, uh, not a little. A lot of philosophy at the end, just like the last ones. Mm-hmm. Um, what else to talk about, Vish? Oscars. Oh, yeah, we, we talked about the Oscars. Yeah. Get into the boring company's new vision. Um, um, airport tech. Yeah, facial recognition. Oh, oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> Kind of like Minority Report, yeah, if you've ever yeah. seen that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your favorite part of this episode, Vish? Favorite part? Um, you're putting me on the spot right now. Yeah, I was just um, shoot it out there. Shoot it out there, sure. Uh, I don't know, I thought, I thought what I picked was the airport tech. Just, airport tech? You, yeah. Your favorite part was the airport tech? Yeah. I like that. I like that. That was cool. It was a mind blow. Uh, I liked the... Ooh, what did I like? Maybe I just didn't like this one at all. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I liked the uh, the fate discussion at the end. Double spoiler now. Yeah, we talked right. about fate. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Oh, no, 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 that's my one. Uh, slash Socratic Gamers. Um, yeah, merchandise. Yep. Shop.GodLightMyFire.com. Uh, pick up a tea on Teespring. Support the podcast. Like, share, subscribe. If you feel you would like to. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Here we go. Boom, and we are back with another episode of Socratic Gamers. Distance yourself from negativity, people. Because there's some toxicity out there. Okay. Opening message of the week is um, stay grounded by staying by yourself. Episode's done. Just kidding. All right. And <laughs> if we, uh, if this is the first time listening to us, basically what we do is we take five things that we thought were pretty cool from the week, uh, and we... Uh, dissect them the only way we know how yep. by talking and talking and talking. Mm-hmm. So first on the docket is uh, Oscars. I heard that it was the uh, lowest Oscar viewership. Is that true? I think so. I yeah, think I saw that somewhere. Like I, I think it was like on Joe Rogan. They're like, oh, it's the low, lowest Oscar viewership. I'm not a big fan of the Oscars. I never watched it, so I already, um, I already don't think it's important. What that tells me is you're not a big fan of movies. Uh, well, I mean. I, I like movies. I I, I like to watch movies all the time. Like uh, if there's a new one every week, like me and my sister yeah, yeah, yeah. typically go. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I'm not a big fan of. No, you know what it is? I'm not a big fan of people giving awards for movies that they think I should watch. Yeah. Because oftentimes the reviews are not very good and the award systems are very biased. Mm-hmm. Allegedly. I yeah. mean, I'm not a part of this, so I don't really know. But yeah, that's my assumption. But you you like the Oscars? You watched it. Yeah. So uh, why'd you watch it? So it's it's not necessarily about the awards too, because these are like movies are personal. It's like, like subjective. Kind of like yeah, they're subjective. Do you like them or not? But like it's. Oh, more, good example. Oh, uh, what was that movie that you loved and I hated? Oh no, 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 we both loved. Everyone hated Batman vs Superman. Yeah. Sick. I love that movie. It was so sick. So sick. <laughs> it was like a really great. But then and then I started telling people I liked it, and they're like, "Oh, dude, like that movie's terrible." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> so, so yeah, it's mainly for me. It's more like okay, well, what movies I may have missed to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's just kind of like a recap. So I just go, oh, that movie. Or even if it wins an award, okay, I'll check it out and see what it's like. Right, right, right. So it gives you a basis from which to distill all the other crappy movies. So yeah. it's like it's like 200 movies came out this this year. These 10 are the best ones to watch. And mm-hmm. then you'll spend your time watching those. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, I heard this thing, again, it was on the Joe Rogan Experience, and it was like, this is very insightful. It's like uh, movies get, there's so many movies that get made uh, there's no possible chance of you watching them all because every year so many new movies come out. Yeah. Like you can never watch the entire history of movies and it's only been around for like, let's say, 60 years. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's such oh, a, all over such the world too, business. Right? So. And, and like they're, it's very hard to come up with new stories. That's why they keep revamping things and such, you know. Yeah, like the Disney ones. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the Disney <laughs> but ones. But they do they look cool out. though. I mean... The, like revamp the revamp ones, live action ones, yeah. Yeah, it's true. I really like the cartoons, though. Like, um, the cartoon versions, I think yeah. they still hold the test of time. Because they're animations, they're drawings, so it's like, you can accept it. But it, Which is kind of weird, though, because, like, if you play a really old video game, you can't accept it. Have you uh, ever... You, you know what's weird? How your mind adjusts accordingly. So, when the first PlayStation came out, um, it was, like, polygonish, And then, like... 
you, but you didn't notice. Like you were like, oh man, like oh yeah, it's like oh it's so good. It was so good, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and then like you, you jump from like what we're watching Subnautica right now, and then you jump back to an old one. Your brain can't adjust, and you're like, oh man, this is terrible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like it, it's weird how the mind works that way. It's because it's like it has nothing to compare and contrast it to. Mm-hmm. But which is weird because like we compare and contrast like daily life all the time. So maybe it's because yeah, we like subconsciously cool. know it's yeah. like computer generated. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, even for movies too, you'd notice that too because uh, some of the ones CG is just like maybe five that's years true, down. Yeah. You're like, oh, that movie was that looks bad. But it, that's why I like the movies where they use like actual puppetry, like uh, the original Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I think it's still pretty good. The lightsabers are terrible, but the actual movie itself, it's like uh, I, I can accept this because right, it's right. like it's like um, they use like actual sets. Another good example is Mortal Kombat, the very first Mortal Kombat. They didn't really rely heavily on. Uh, Damn, I want to watch that movie again. Uh, they didn't rely heavily on uh, special effects or anything. It was all about um, actual martial arts. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like costume design, so that that holds the test in time. Yeah, I guess if you use, if you use less CG, it might be it might last. Yeah, a true. longer time. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. What, what are you looking forward to for the Oscars? So, like I, now that you've seen the Oscar list, like what what movies entice well, you? Well, the one that won, I do want to watch um, Shape of Water. Okay. And it's you, shapeless, formless. Yeah. It's filmed in Toronto, which is kind of cool. Oh, that's I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. It's filmed in Toronto. I think a lot of them are like Canadian actors or something. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Most of them. Yeah. So it's I just kind of like an interesting touch to it. Yeah. So I'll be like, oh, cool. I'll, nice. I'll well, it. what's what's the entire premise? Um. Well, from the trailers, it's more like a person falls in love with a fish man. Okay. Like, like a weird creature. That's cool. Yeah. And then I think she's specific. like she she can't speak, she's like mute. Oh, that's cool. So there's like a lot of sign language, and stuff. Oh, and they teach the fish sign language. I have, I have no idea. Oh, okay. Well, there I have no you go. Idea. I still gotta watch it. So. Yeah. Uh, well, you like those artsy movies. I don't actually like those artsy movies. Like uh, <laughs> like Red Sparrow. I just saw it with my sister. I was like, damn, this is too heavy for me. Like if you if anybody is out there who watched it, mm-hmm. I would give it a five out of five. Okay. Although it got like a six, six out of ten. I give it like a five out of five because what? it was so oh, oh, okay, five okay. out of five. It got six out of ten. I oh, like okay, I like okay, my okay. scales in five. I don't like I don't like tens. It's too much for me. Um I just think tens are a little bit easier to understand. Alright, fine. It got six out of ten. I'm giving it a ten out of ten. Um Okay. Because <laughs> cause it was so like realistic and like mm-hmm. it it was just shot really well, but it was so like morbid Mm -hmm. like it freaked me out and i was like "Mm, i don't like this movie like i would never watch it again but i see how it deserves it should deserve a higher score okay yeah it's something i'm sure you would like because you like that drama stuff if you liked eastern promises it's like it's along those lines like very gritty i see and like realistic i understood yeah anything else that's enticing you for the oscars uh mm, well i think i saw most of it except for the ones that were listed like did, what did you think of the Watcher? Oh, what, oh, Get Out one? Get Out was there, but it only won for like original screenplay. Lame. Oh, what did you think f- about the actual Oscars themselves? Like, were they good? Like, should should I have watched it as well, you were I, watching I, it? So yeah, we, I was doing when, other things. I was like, eh, it's not my thing. Uh, I'm only caring about like who's winning. Ne- like, it's not necessarily like a big thing, but it's more like just give me the okay. Well, uh, you got you already gave me who are the nominees now just give me like I don't like the music stuff I right, don't right. Like, you just want the list I just want the list yeah so why so why watch it then why don't you just wait for the list to come out huh or you want to see like the speeches and stuff but I'm not just watching it I'm doing other things as it plays yeah that's the sad part you know it's like well actually I think the reason also the re- like the viewership is so low is mm-hmm. like for the millennials who were like I guess into the movies or something but mm-hmm. like the, the thing is so long right the Oscars yeah I don't think anyone's got time for that. <laughs> yeah, that's tr- how, Unlike how many the hours days. is that? I think it was like oh, three hours or something. Jesus, that's like a that's like a Lord of the Rings epic. Yeah, you're just like sitting there watching the stuff. Oscars. <laughs> People get awards and sing their yeah it's speeches kind of and stuff. Yeah, I see how it doesn't work. Oh, it won't work for others. And it's funny that you said like you were doing other things with uh, our new tech society. If you can like hook up multiple screens or like have like an iPad and a phone and stuff, mm-hmm. you do like multiple things at once and it's like even though you're watching it like even though you get viewership yeah. like what level of viewership are they fully engaged or are they like half engaged or are they just leaving it on the background uh-huh. is it white noise you know what I mean right 
like even though like a Joe Rogan podcast are like three hours, I don't like sit there and watch the full three hours. I like I leave it playing as I'm doing other things. Yeah, you know. I think that's like, the that's what the today's generation is all about, or the yeah, time of today. Consume, time of now, consume, right? consume yeah. as yeah. much as you can. Yeah, and, and any other ones? Um, I can't think of I. It's mainly the top, the the, the, the what do you call it? Best picture. Oh, so you're just, the, you're waited for the best yeah, picture. Like I've heard some good news about. I didn't hear any. I didn't hear myself, but someone else was telling me. Uh, what was it called? Three billboards or something like that. High title of the movie. You see, people were saying it's good. Oh yeah, I wanted to see that with my sister, but she didn't want to see it. <laughs> what? What? Uh, I have what no idea what it's about? about. No idea what it's about. Okay. Uh. Well, I I saw the premise was like she creates billboards because somebody like her daughter good died or something. Oh okay. So she puts I like understand. three billboards to yeah. like promote it or something, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. the town's getting upset at her because they want her to take it down. Okay. Something like that. Uh huh. All right, so yeah, I didn't. I don't know much. I just heard it, so I gotta eventually check it out. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of movies, um, Black Panther just crossed the one billion mark worldwide. Oh yeah, it's pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. I know it sounds like a big number. You're like, whoa, billion dollars. Like at today's time, there's a lot of movies that reach one billion dollars. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, 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 true, true, true. So like, um, so I was doing a little bit of research, and um, I mean, th- those are they, the movies that don't don't win awards. <laughs> yeah, which is kind of funny. They make a lot of money, but it's like. I think well, see, just, that, that's why I don't watch the Academy Awards. But I think see, just, it's like, I mm. think it's it's like a lot of the choices. Like sometimes you can kind of tell. It's like okay, what's happening in society now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And what was the movie talking about? And a lot of them are like indies too. Like not a lot of budget. Yeah, but it's weird though. So that giving like, them recognition. Yeah, but and maybe give... those directors. It's just it's all about, it's only for them. Like then they'll get recognized and they'll get other jobs, like more jobs. I, that. Yeah, that's weird. So it's like a it's like a resume thing. It is a resume thing. All right, whatever. It's for weird, them, though. it's weird. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, but it should be based off of how much money you earn. I think. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Not necessarily because the money also depends on uh, marketing and all that stuff. But if it's a small movie, that's a good story. Mm-hmm. Mm, it's not going to get high amount of like. Uh, it's not gonna make a lot of money, right? True, I, I guess. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah. So, um, so atop this list of billion, so what? What they're saying is they believe that Black Panther, at the end of its run, mm-hmm. uh, could be the biggest, um, biggest superhero movie, um, of North America of all time. Oh yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool because it's an almost all black cast. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like it's it's so. But see, then it's like. It's like did it did it reach so much because they want to support like, you know, black culture right I, now? I don't or, think you know what I mean? It's I don't like, think it's that. I is think. it a good move? Is it so good that it's like so? All right, let, let, let me let me just run down this. Um, yeah. So, uh, it also could be seen as like the uh, it could make its way as the uh, the biggest uh, solo superhero flick of all time. So like uh, solo like uh, like yeah, one see. one superhero yeah, yeah, yeah and atop this list of other billion dollar movies are uh, Dark Knight Dark Knight Rises Civil War Iron Man three Avengers Age of Ultron and um, I think that's it yeah yeah just, just those ones so like um, yeah so so those other ones were like really good but did though does this movie like is it up to par this is what i mean about like is it for a social reason that it's making so much money or is it because it was so good like do you think it it rivaled the dark knight rises um or even the dark knight like heath ledger's yeah yeah you know what i mean it's like (laughs) i i I understand it being like iron man 3 civil war and avengers age of ultron yeah like those those make sense in that category because those are like, yeah, those are like the summer blockbusters, right? Yeah. Like people get hyped over it. But like in terms of good movies, like The Dark Knight was such a good movie. Same with Dark Knight Rises. Like, yeah, really yeah, movie, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So it's like, well, Christopher Nolan, so he's the man. Uh, so it's, like, it's, it's so tough to say. You know what I mean? Like movie-wise, it wasn't that good. But hype-wise, it was super good. Yeah. I mean, no, well, I can't say it's not that good. It was, it was awesome. Like I gave it a five out of five. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, like we were saying, there's a couple dragging parts in it. Yeah, yeah. So that that's why I feel like it has like a social backing to it. I think so, probably. You know what I mean? Like it's like like people want to like promote this movie because it it's like empowerment. Could be, but I I liked it though, like the story itself, you know. 
I don't know. It's, it's sort of like Wonder to, Woman. When yeah. Wonder Woman came out, like, everyone was promoting it because of women empowered. But then I watched the movie. I was like, it's okay. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that right, good. Right, right. People are like, oh, yeah, it's so good. If you don't like it, you're like a, a sexist. You know, like, no, yeah, yeah. not really. Just It's not that great. <laughs> you know, am I a racist for not, like, although I gave Black, at a, Black Panther uh, 5 out of 5. Yeah. You were saying, like, a uh, quick side note in that in that movie. Oh, Hunter right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. Um yeah, I looked this up. Like when we were watching it, um, they used um, a phrase, mm-hmm. uh, "Glory to Hanuman," uh-huh, yeah. and like that kind of threw me off. I'm like, "What?" Because Hanuman's um, a monkey god in, yeah. in Hinduism, and oh, actually, side interesting side note: if you go down Finch, if you like drive towards uh, Richmond Hill. Uh, you know the Silver City, the movie theater? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right the, before the that, there? there's a giant Hanuman statue. Yeah, 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 yeah. You saw it? You've seen it? Well, I go by that all the time. Oh, shoot. I was, it, it's funny because like, when we talk about Hanuman, it, it, it's weird how your mind works. It's like not until it's time to go to the dentist do you realize that there's so many dentist shops around you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, when I saw the Hanuman thing, I was like, oh, Hanuman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, it's a huge one there, only because we are just talking about it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, I pass yeah. by it all the time. I never noticed it once. <laughs> you know? Sorry, continue. Yeah. So, um... A bit, so they used the phrase, and then I was like kind of thrown off. Like, well, that make, I don't know if there was any like African culture that has that. That's what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. And then I I looked it up the other day, and then it was it has to do with um, the, the word that was actually used. So the 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 tribe falls like a gorilla god, mm-hmm. and that his name is Man Ape. And I think that the film bureau or something, whatever it's called, that uh-huh. they're like I think that could be offensive, to, so we shouldn't use that. Oh, I see, I see, so, I see. So they had to like kind of change it, but also have something that kind of made sense. Right, 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 right. Because so, you don't want to like suggest. So it, would, it would be weird to say glory to man, a like yeah, when everyone's a black cast with the connotation of that. Right, meaning, right, 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 right. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because that would have been really awkward. Glory to the, uh, what was it? Man uh, Ape. Man Ape, man I think ape. it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. And people were like, what? Man Ape? <laughs> Goddamn. So it was kind of it was kind of interesting to find outrage. out why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that would have been. And in order to have that, why would you want that, right? True, yeah. Unnecessarily, yeah. so. But then why'd they go with the Indian guy? Why don't they uh, Wong, Wong Kugong, the, the Chinese? I think that's the name, Wong. Uh, I don't think anyone would know that. Yeah, true. I don't know if anyone really knows Hanuman either, but like it's a little bit easier to say then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true, true. <laughs> oh, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, all right, so in tech news, uh, we got some facial recognition privacy issues. Oh yeah. Like, are you? All right, so you, this is yours. So yeah, go, this is go mine. For it. Uh, so it's kind of cool what what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You want to just swim around here? Um. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. So, it's the British Airways is doing this, and they've had them. I think I don't know exactly where they've had them, but now they're expanding their identification gates. Okay. Or it's like it's biometric identification. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and they're using them in like uh, airports in New York, Miami, Orlando. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's. Uh, so this is before getting on the, before getting on the plane. Okay. Right. Like you still have to show to go through airport security. That's a different. Okay. Yeah. It's still yeah. the same process. You gotta yeah. show your passport and your boarding pass, right? Oh, you know what it's like? It's like Minority Report. Uh, Except they used your eyes. I guess they didn't use facial recognition. Uh, they used your eyes. Sure, sure. I guess so. Um, That'd but, be cool in the future. <laughs> so, basically, whenever you're you're gonna board the plane, right? Uh-huh. You gotta, you still gotta show both of the, your identifications and the boarding, like the passport and the boarding pass, right? Okay, yeah. And it's a slow, it's a slow process because it's a person that's checking it, right, right, and right. Then checking your your face, checking your boarding pass. So they're just searching for efficiency. Yeah. So okay. to make it more efficient, again, more technology, we lose jobs, but <laughs> but efficiency increases, right? Right, 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 right. <laughs> so basically, they add them all at the gates, and then. You just recognize your face, uh-huh. and then you just walk through. Oh, that's cool. And it's they're saying that um, it has 
uh, like, so they can, what do they say? Your British Airways has been able to board more than 400 customers in only 22 minutes. Ooh. Which is. Well, that's pretty efficient, And the company actually. says, yeah, they say that it's less than half the normal amount of time. Wow. Okay. Right. So some, sometimes these things can actually, like not this thing, but like prior, it could delay flight. Because right, not everyone right, is boarded right, 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 or some, yeah, some technical you. error or something, right? Yeah. So this one makes it a lot quicker uh, to board and probably potentially even leave earlier. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> right? Uh -huh. So I think it's uh, – there is – I guess there's then comes other questions to privacy and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, it's like uh, privacy issues are very – odd for me because it's like i i'm a proponent of efficiency i like i like it when marketers market towards me mm -hmm. i like it when i give like my my fingerprint so that they can um make me open my iphone better you know like i i actually like these kinds of things yeah i don't mind them yeah although i know a lot of people do hate them but mm -hmm. it's like like i i don't, I don't know what, like it would be it would be nice to like talk to a person who's against it so yeah the to, counter to, viewpoint exactly yeah you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but uh it's more about efficiency you know like i think a lot of people would i don't think they would mind because like i get i get that people like i don't want my information out there but it's like what what information do you have that's so important <laughs> you know what I mean? it's like right unless you have something Unless you have something, well, but even like, yeah, that, that is that is the one argument. But even then, sense, I think there could be like other, other uses, to, like yeah, other, probably purposes, other rules yeah. that you cannot cross. You cannot send that signal, like send that image to something else. There must be some government like, regulations. Like for that, I, I, guess. I guess what, like I can't, I'm trying to think of like a negative counter to them having your information, mm -hmm. but I really can't think of one. Right. It's like. It's like okay, they will. Well, maybe we don't know the whole what other aspects that could happen. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like you would probably need to know, talk to somebody that has yeah, yeah, yeah. looked into these kinds of privacy. Like, issues. like if you ever see uh, terms and conditions may apply, um, that Netflix documentary. Uh, well, it's out on Netflix. It's not made by Netflix, but like um, basically, it's about privacy. Yeah. And like if you Google something, people will, um, people will. Like like so so they showed like this case of this one guy who like who searched something or posted something on Facebook and then yeah. the people went to his door, mm -hmm. like the marshals and then they found out he was like an ex uh, marine. Yeah. So then like that happened, but I mean like you're you're just gonna get like bugs in the beginning, but if you know you did nothing wrong, it's like it's like bro, chill. Yeah, yeah. You know. So yeah, it reminds me like because there's other things that they're doing now at airports too, like kind of less down, uh, cutting down on people's jobs, but. Is it more efficient? Is like a lot of th that's kind of questions I ask. Right, right. right. Um, for instance, at, at I know at Pearson at some I don't know if it's every airline is using this, but like I know I used KLM over in November. I don't know what that is. Uh, oh, it's, it's, it's a Dutch airline. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. And I had to instead of going to the counter where they would weigh your bag and then they would tag uh, the baggage slip on around your bags uh-huh uh they don't have that anymore you have to print it out yourself at a, like a kiosk yeah, yeah, yeah and then you gotta like i have to spend my time st sticking this tape around my bag right, 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 right you know what right, i mean right, like right. and i don't like i feel that's time consuming though that's time consuming because, this like, is what i'm saying but this you, is not efficient cause, yeah, yeah, cause yeah. I don't know. I'm. It's not my job. You know what I mean. Like right, the person right, right. who does that knows what they're doing. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what they're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, should someone else be doing this for me? <laughs> True. Yeah, yeah. I get what right? you're saying. Or like an efficiency where it that maybe the computer does it itself. Yeah. yeah right? I get what if you're you saying. do that, that's fine. Like I don't want to do any of this kind of aspect. Like that's why I like the facial one where I don't have to do anything. It's just mm. automatically scan in my face. All right, you're you're the right person. I I kind of feel like we're we're in the like the um the hiccup stage for like a efficiency we're trying yeah. everything we can to like make it more efficient but mm -hmm. like there's gonna be some bumps in the road it's like whatever you know like right will will that um will that passport thing they were talking about like will not passport um the the thing you're saying, print, no the printing out oh right uh yeah will, yeah, will yeah, that last who knows or whatever you know? it's called yeah i don't know but like i i feel like just we just gotta give it some time 
That's all it really is. Yeah, I hope we learn from that. I don't want to do yeah. that. <laughs> and we're going to have some mistakes along the way. It's yeah. like whatever. Uh, but speaking of mistakes, which we don't want to have, is um, so Elon Musk's Hyperloop is now yeah i saw something on the social medias yeah he posted like a video Mm -hmm. um and um and what they're saying like i was checking out some articles uh they're switching the vision from like for for the hyperloop to make it more about urban transit so basically if you watch the video um they go underground then they shoot the people underground through tunnels and then they come up outside Mm -hmm. that would be a mistake you do not want to hiccup for because people can die (laughs) that's not cool like the efficiency thing's like one thing but like this one's pretty intense but but yeah like would you would you feel comfortable like using that that system i mean like we talked about this before like the the rocket travel yeah making things a lot faster like elon musk uh uh-huh. uh is using those what are the rockets called uh reverse hybrid you... reverse no, no no i don't know the bfr you're talking about yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. one going like for travel yeah yeah, yeah 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 so like uh so like he created like a reverse thruster rockets to make it land and they're they're planning to make those things uh used for travel yeah like uh mm-hmm. you know so like i was saying that i wouldn't trust it at least in the beginning mm-hmm. you know but it's sort of like airplanes like you were right when you're when you're bringing that up before it's like it's like airplanes nobody trusted in the beginning until people started using it all the time yeah but i wouldn't want to be one of the first test pilots you know what i mean <laughs> i wonder what it'll look like going underground and stuff maybe it would be like the subway you know uh probably just you know we're only in concept phase right Right, 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 right. right. Still, How's the boring company doing though? Uh, they're the one that's doing that, right? The one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. the one that. They're but they're they're growing. switching from because uh, they they wanted to create that that transit to connect the hyperloop. Yeah, the hyperloop. I thought that's what they're doing. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I guess so. But the the article I was seeing is that they're switching the vision from like that international travel to urban transit. Oh, you mean. The international travel. Remember, you're saying like we can go from they want to, they want to make it go from like, um, Toronto to. Uh, oh, you mean in in the underground? Yeah, yeah, yeah like you about. mean, yeah. uh, um, like nationwide versus. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so no, like I mean, super it, far. I understand. Yeah, they're also oh, it's not countrywide, it's nationwide. So it's within the nation. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I thought that w- that was the original vision, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but then so I saw now they're like, doing switching so the vision. So I understand that you got to take, I think, probably one step at a time. Yeah, for sure, actually. Yeah. The local what, 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 was, what was the Toronto one? It's like Toronto to Montreal? I, I don't know. I, maybe. They're, yeah, they're trying to connect something. Um, I think it was Toronto to Montreal, but that's like a typical like six-hour drive. Mm-hmm. But they want to make it like 40 minutes or something like that. Right. Oh. Using the Hyperloop. Yeah. Um, but I guess yeah, you're right. It's like it's that's a bit too far of a distance mm-hmm. at present because you're you're crossing provinces. Um, so they're shooting to more like scalable. I think that's. I think you got to start somewhere, and I think the yeah, scalable is where kind of need to do. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't mind it. I mean, yeah. as long as I'm not the first one to jump on it. Right. You know? But I could see that as in the future being like mm-hmm. a effective means for travel. It's just like the subway. It's like mm-hmm. people back then were like, oh, what do I? Like, I don't trust the subway. I mean, no, it it, it happened time. even for everything. I, I remember like watching these old period pieces like mm-hmm. telephones. This is uh, this is really weird to have. We shouldn't have this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's weird. I, did, I didn't a, know it was like that. Oh, yeah, it was like that. You could probably even having electricity, the wires in your house. You know, your, your host will... Burn, and Burn yeah, that's like, true. Explode. I didn't think about that. Yeah, 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 true, yeah, yeah true. of course. Yeah, we're all resistant to new technology until we become dependent on new technology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why, uh, if you understand that kind of, you know, the facts of that, I, I, that's actually, why I Actually, it, it's funny because, like, I um, uh, seeing this high technology course uh, before. I, actually, it's a oh, side note. They were saying that the future will be like uh, Minority Report. Mm-hmm. The uh, the way they advertise to us will be like that, uh, with augmented reality and stuff. Yeah, like we'll all each see different um, see different like advertising geared specifically towards us. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's kind of cool. But uh, also in that course, they're talking about how like a big a big hindrance to new technology is education. 
So it's like you have to tell people why it's important and why they need it. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it's like... But it's that like makes sense for any product, fire. though, right? You got to sell your product. Uh, no, it de- depends on the product because, like, uh, clothing. Well, you're right. You're right on a, on a minute scale, uh-huh. like, why you need it. But, like, the, the education level on, like, clothing, like, apparel is different than new technology. Right. Right, because it's, like, well, it's just it's clothing, branded. Uh-huh. Doesn't matter. It looks cool, feels good, right? Yeah. The education is not that important. But, like, for, like, an iPhone, people are, like, well, why do I need a touchscreen if I have a camera and a phone? Mm-hmm. You know, why do I need one as opposed to two? Yeah. You know, then that's why education is very important for high tech. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it just like falls in line with lower time. But like the assumption is like when electricity was first brought out, people are like, "Oh no, my house will burn down or some shit," you know, like cause the wires. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just like the hyperloop. Yeah. I'm I'm like worried about it. <laughs> yeah. Of course. I mean, it's probably not. It's natural to worry about it. Well, yeah. Until we become dependent on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. Uh, philosophical quandary of the week. This is how we like to end it here mm-hmm. now for the last two episodes uh, and ongoing. Uh, so I'm going to pose a question to Vishal because I like your insights and we're going to deconstruct it. Uh, so my question is, is a person in charge of their own destiny or are we governed by fate? What do you think? Govern, uh, in, char- in charge of your own destiny. Yeah. Do, do, you, have, do you actually have choice or is, is there free will? <sighs> So, like, can you choose, like, 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 are you the master controller of your life? Hmm. Are you the pilot or are you being piloted? Are you the pilot or well, the passenger? That's, that's tough because I, my view on that free will is based on your past actions, right? Right, yeah, yeah, which I totally agree with. Which is in the Kabbalion. Mm-hmm. So, like, they, the Kabbalion's, like, uh, the Egyptian, in case you're wondering, like, the Egyptian emerald tablets, yeah. uh, oldest okay. script and stuff. All the scientists used it. Uh, so that's where action, reaction, Newton's law came from. Yeah. Uh, so they'd, they, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't say that there's free will because every action is, uh, every reaction is based off a of previous action. So, like, what you're saying now, it's like, well, do I really have choice or did I, did I, falsely believe I had choice because mm-hmm. of my past actions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I so, think... Yeah. So, but do, are we the passengers to life, or are we in control of life? Hmm. And I don't know. It's a tough one for me to say, because you're probably a mix of both, depending on what's happening around you. Okay. And... Uh... And based on past experiences. If it's based on past, you're not really in control. Okay. But then also, things can change depending on what's happening in the environment. Uh, actually, no, you're not in control. Uh, yes, I was waiting for you to hit that too, because I was like thinking about this, and I was like, I was like, okay, so from my perspective, okay, I would be in control of my own actions. But that's not true, because my actions are, my future actions are based off my previous actions, mm-hmm. right? But then it's like, well, if I want to do something, like am i at the whim of somebody else or like so it's like it's like uh we show up you and i are walking we're, yeah. we're going about our day and then we meet at the bus stop mm-hmm. right what are the chances of us meeting at the bus stop you know what i mean it's like yeah. it's like well it's based off of chance it's based on variables mm-hmm. like people don't don't like to extrapolate that far yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and realize like no no it's you woke up at 10 30 let's say i woke up at 10 15 it took you 20 minutes to get ready it took me you know 15 minutes to get ready yeah, and by yeah, the yeah. time we both got there it's mm-hmm. like it just happened by chance and then people were like wow like it was it was like it was kismet that we were brought here well actually no that is well fate is kismet but it's like <laughs> you know like you're like what are mm-hmm. the chances or whatever but it's like yeah highly probable like it, it's almost like it's almost like everything is already predestined and it's just extrapolating further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, my, I'm a firm believer that if you, can, if you can mathematically triangulate all the way back to the Big Bang, then why can't you do it forward? Right? You yeah. can, right? The only reason why you can't is because of random. Mm-hmm. Right? People say, like, I can't account for random. I think random means what you random, aren't... yeah, is... Uh... Random is just every variable in the set yeah, yeah. being accounted for. Yeah. It's not that you can't account for it. Well, no, no. 
Yeah, it is. It's you can't account for it because you don't know how to. It's not impossible to account for random. Mm -hmm. You just don't know how to do it yet. Yeah, is what I believe. Right. Because like every like it's like it's like in the beginning like one cell became two cell became four cell become eight cell yeah. like because everything divided mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. so it's like well that's simple mathematics but now we just have to create an algorithm which is so highly complex that we can we can calculate it forward by including all variables right you know yeah so then so then mm -hmm. it begs the question um, can people change. <laughs> uh, I guess not. Okay, yeah, true. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. So Carl Jung believes that nobody can change. I actually, I heard this from my my first uh, martial arts instructor. Not instru like I had an instructor, and then there was like the the grand master of the place, and he was saying that people don't change. Mm -hmm. They only they only um, manage who they are. Okay. Okay. I agreed with that. I agreed with that. And then thinking about it, it's like, yeah, people can't change. Carl Jung even said it. He's like, we're built with archetypes. And then there's like, um, it's called the collective unconscious, where it's like your entire lineage makes up your your current mental framework. Okay. Right? So like, like if your dad was a potter and his dad was a potter, well, you're mm -hmm. going to be more predisposed to understanding potter yeah, ideals, yeah, yeah. right? But that, that's, that's the collective unconscious. Okay. But what I'm thinking now is, so can people change? Yes, if the variables are there for them to change. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, right. That's, so, that's but fine. so it's yeah. like, but again, it's like passenger versus pilot. Yeah, they're just a passenger. Mm -hmm. The variables have to be there for you to change. Like, it's like, oh man, I would never, uh, or it's like, I will always be a woman hater, and then all of a sudden, like something. Uh, like, we need something a better <laughs> example. Like, uh, it's like. All right, it's, it's like I, I will always hate dogs. I'm afraid of dogs. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then all of a sudden you get a dog, and then you learn slowly, slowly that dogs aren't that bad. Right. The variable was presented before me, that it allowed me to change my my mindset. Mm -hmm. But prior to that variable being there, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't have changed. Right. You know what I mean? So like people can change insofar as the variables allow them to change. Yeah. And but then mm -hmm. it's like so then when people say like so then the bigger question is like well what if they don't want to listen to the change mm -hmm. you know what I mean? it's like so it's like uh, oh you're doing this bad and they're like uh, no I'm I don't I'm not doing it bad and they're not listening to you yeah right so the variables are just not there so it's like so then people would argue like well I'm in charge because I don't want to change it's like no no the variable wasn't there for you. To even conceive the possibility for change, do you uh, know what okay, I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Right. So it's like like not not enough of the variables. Exactly. So I believe that's what. So there's no such thing as free will. It's it's all governed by destiny, yeah. mm -hmm. but destiny is just the variable of mathematics. Yeah, I think that's what I was saying in the beginning, right? Wait, what were you saying? Like the, uh, I think it was the same thing that you were saying. Maybe I wasn't explaining it correctly. That there's. If there's no free will. Yeah, I, I already said, I already knew. Like I, I figured that out before. Like, yeah, 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 but we it, talk about this before. right, and, and it's it's funny because like, if you, so then if you're like, oh no, that's not true, blah blah blah. If you look at the top philosophers and the top, um, like the the esoteric uh, belief systems, like mm -hmm. if you look at religion and stuff, um, they all believe in no free will. Yeah, like I can prove it. Fate is yeah. a god. Our destiny. From, that's another god so the, these these words that we created people are like oh like those are just words no no if you actually look at the origin I think it's called etymology when you look at the origin of a word mm, I, I think hope it's called so, so I can sound smart <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the etymology of a word mm -hmm. uh, it's based off of so like destiny and fate are Greek gods okay yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think fate was a Norse god I, 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 don't I, I don't know, but it was. Remember gargoyles when you were children? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where I heard of uh, fate, the sisters of fate. Okay, right. So it's like if all these things believe in these these things, you have to think like, how come they believe these things? They probably came to the same conclusion as us. Well, it's action reaction. Mm -hmm. Like one thing leads to another. Right. You know. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it just makes the most common sense. Like I, I don't like. If the variables are there, it will change. But it was already pre predisposed to change. Yeah. But if 
if the variables aren't there, then you're never going to change. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like what level of variable will constitute making you change? You know? Yeah, right. I, it's like I it's like, do part. you need to see war in order to change? Mm-hmm. Do you just need to see a? Because uh, like a good example. So like um, uh, Siddhartha right the the buddha guy he was having like a cool experience right there was no variables for him to believe in um believe in the redemption from suffering right right until he saw a sick person yeah and that that caused him to be like oh man i there's suffering i need to alleviate this Mm -hmm. right but that was his that was his threshold that was his like threshold variable yeah right um but but like if you take another person who's like Who's like still, like they might need to see war. They need, might see need to see famine. They might need to see somebody get killed in front of them mm-hmm. before they can start to take life more seriously, mm-hmm. you know, or be affected into suffering. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah, yeah. yeah it's interesting. Yeah, I I only say this because it's like you see like a lot of motivational things like pop up, and like like one of the funniest things is like when you start doing things for yourself, like other people will be like, I want to do that for myself too, and it's like, do it. <laughs> but it's like, but what level of variable is going to get you to get off the couch and do what you want to do? Right. You know, not many people are willing to take the jump because the variables aren't set yet for them to take the jump. Yeah. But what's what's even interesting too is like the obstacles become variables of growth or um, setbacks. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like like um, you can you can like break a leg right yeah. and then like for you that variable is either a positive or negative yeah. right it's like oh i can grow from this i can become stronger blah blah, blah. or you can use it as a setback you right know? Yeah, yeah, yeah and just ruin your whole life yeah yeah, yeah. Per se. Yeah, yeah yeah but that's that even that in itself but is, then is that necessarily your fault <laughs> no it, it's it's right. your it's your what level of variable do you need yeah, in yeah, order yeah. to to change mm-hmm. you know I don't know. Do you, any other counter arguments on against free will or for free will? Well, I am. I can't. Oh, I, I, I know, but like you know, I think we devil's already, advocate. Yeah, yeah. Like, is there? Because I've been thinking about this one a lot. I'm like, mm-hmm. a lot of people are all about like free will and like I have the power to change myself. You do within the con, even in the book Outliers, right? So um, Outliers, um, Malcolm Gladwell, they talk about special people, and then people are like, oh, they're so amazing, and he said like, yeah, they had they had the talent. But it, it was the environment. It had nothing to do with the person. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The environment's what shapes you. Mm-hmm. You know? You could take a really crappy person at something yeah. and they'll beat somebody who's really gifted because they're going to work harder. But that's not, that's, not, that's not you exercising your free will. That's just you have a predisposition already to be like this. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I understand Which is that. another action-reaction thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know. If you're listening to this and you disagree, please email. Don't call, but email or something. <laughs> or like post or, or post like a rebuttal video or something, like tag us in it. Because I'm so curious, like, why do people believe in free will when it's so evident through... I think like, a lot of people say, like, it's not, like Sam Harris and stuff. They don't He's believe pretty, him. They yeah. believe him. He believes in free will. No, no, he doesn't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like the 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 most modern contemporary thinkers all know that there's no free will. Yeah, all believe that there's no free. Will. No, no, I don't even say believe. They know because if you really think about it, it's like it really comes down to action reaction. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Of course. Or maybe it's the out. People just want to believe in free will because they want the out. It's like. Uh, they, they, they don't like feeling like a passenger. They want to be the yeah, pilot. Yeah, that's the thing that I... You know, it's like insecurity. You have, to, you have to understand that you're not in control. Yeah, and it's not, you know, it's not always happy news. <laughs> no, yeah. The yeah, world's yeah. not supposed to give you happy news. No, no, it's not. It's not, but you have to appreciate the unhappy news because it's what allows you to see the happy. If, like, think about it this way. If you never knew what bad was, how would you know what good was? Right? Right. It's like... There is no gain without loss. You need this is the dichotomy, the like, the Tao of life. You need both. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, you always need both. And you transcend your so good and bad are both perspectives, right? Perspectives of suffering, mm-hmm. right? But like you need you need both to understand right any perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can rise above it all by observing it for what it is. It's just happening. It's like bombs in Syria right now. It's like 
well, is that a good or a bad thing? Or should it, is it unjust or just? It's just happening. You're the one creating the narrative in your own mind that something is good or bad mm-hmm. or should not happen or should happen. Right. Similar people who want to change the world. It's like life's just moving forward at a constant rate given the variables that were presented before it mm-hmm. and like expanding infinitely according to what came before, right? It's us who creates the narrative or the story of what we believe to be right or wrong, good or bad, just or unjust. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There is no good or bad. It's all perceptions. Yeah. Final thoughts? Uh... <laughs> if you could, if you were going to die tomorrow, what would you, what would you say? What would I say? Yeah. Well, what would your, what would your final takeaway on earth be? Mm. I don't know, man. I probably wouldn't say anything. Ooh, I like that. A lot is said in silence. You know, you know there's like these <laughs> mythical stories. No, no, I, I, it's just funny because it's like it's like you can take or right, you can take a, a simple action. Say there you go. You wouldn't say anything, and I just created the narrative. Oh, that's like you know, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. very um, monk like of you. You know, because there's a lot of stories of like um, on the deathbed of the monk, he just smiled, and a lot was said in his smile. <laughs> than his words you know like you hear about that stuff all the yeah, time yeah, right yeah, yeah, the yeah. the master rishi monk you know uh-huh. rishi means seer uh so it's like it's like who's creating that narrative <laughs> then she just was like i'm not gonna say anything yeah but then you extrapolate like oh what a wise person right yeah you made your own exactly story life is just happening forward yeah it's you who's creating the distinction See, see, they they would call you the the wise rishi the accepting monk blah 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 <laughs> and then i would say uh enjoy the ride yeah, right, yeah. and they'd be like, "Oh, he's a true, he's a he's truly understood the the nature of reality." Mm-hmm. Blah, blah blah. But it's like, no, like it's it's like you're creating that story. Yeah, 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 we are no wiser or smarter than you. We just thought about things a little bit longer. No, no, no you know what it is? We're not afraid to look into the dark. Oh, right. Like if you think about it that way, yeah. it's like it's like what separates like so whoever whoever's listening to this and they're like, wow, you guys like because I've I've come across that multiple times. Like I'm just like sp- we 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 engage in this dialogue all the time. You and I, yeah. And oh, like yeah. and people are always like, wow, like you guys are like very wise or something like that. I've I've, I've come across this multiple times, <laughs> and I'm just like, not not really. No, I just I I just thought about it more than you have. Yeah, That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah. But it, it's like, but. But it's like, well, I think about this thing too. And like, I believe that the energy fields of the nature mother Gaia mm-hmm. is going to shower a rain of love upon my soul, blah, 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 blah. They create this whole narrative, Yeah. right? But it's like, but then how come you can look into the, the Tao and see the negative and positive natures of life? It's because we're not afraid of looking at the dark. You know what I mean? That's yeah, really yeah. actually that's that's the primary takeaway. I'm gonna make that the final takeaway. Uh, that you have to look <laughs> at the dark in order to see the truth. Because like it's easy to look at the positive things in life. It's it's very difficult to derive meaning and understanding and lessons from life by looking at the dark. You know what I mean? I am a lazy person. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody's gonna look at that. But if 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 I start thinking to myself, like I'm a lazy person, it's like I gotta like from my perspective, I would look at it and be like, "Am I a lazy person?" Right. You know. But there are people that are like, "No, I'm not." First instinct, "No, I'm not." You know. But like, that's well, it not being a able... person. But yeah. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. It's like that kind of mentality is gonna make you not um, see things from a realistic point of view. Mm-hmm. You know, it's gonna be a biased point of view, right. where it's like you are always positive. You must always be positive. It's another thing. It's like it's like when people are like, oh, you 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 have to love yourself always. It's like, yeah, I get it, I get it. <laughs> but it's like, but do you love your laziness? Because then you're just gonna perpetuate laziness, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. But you should love yourself enough to not be lazy. Well, that's that's kind of like a it's like a loophole in saying that. You know, it's right. like so you're you're getting me to do a positive by ignoring the negative. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like you should love yourself enough to not think that you're lazy. Okay, so I'm just band-aiding the solution. I'm not actually looking at the dark. No, dude, you're lazy. You know what I mean? Like look at your laziness and then face it. 
Right. You know? And then if you can move forward accordingly, that's where real growth comes from. Mm -hmm. It's not from blindly telling yourself, like, positive affirmations. Yeah. That doesn't do anything, yeah. You're just preaching to the choir. It's like, yeah, man, I love myself already, (laughs) so I don't need to change anything. No, no, maybe you do need to change something. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Take that away. (laughs) Until next time, uh, don't be afraid of the dark. Yeah. I've got nothing else to say. (laughs) All right. All right, cool, cool. So uh, next week we are going to watch... Hopefully we get to watch um, Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. Yeah. We might do a recap of that. If we don't watch it, then we'll do another one of these podcasts. But if we watch Tomb Raider, we're definitely going to make that weekly roundup about that. Yeah. Review. Review. Yeah. yeah. So stay tuned. Oh, uh, no, that's all I got. So you got. All right. Take it easy. Easy. Bye-bye. Peasy. <laughs>